Over the last year, the speed of progress towards the new Mountbatten building has been impressive. The building has literally risen from the ashes of its predecessor, but with a scale and presence that is both visually and structurally exciting. And pride and expectation for the building's future aren't just confined to the School of Electronics and Computer Science. You must feel there's something really special about this. Oh, yeah, you put so much time and energy and effort in, in, into delivering a project, a complex project like this, that it's, it's almost like a child. You, you like to see it grow and you like to see it develop as it should, and, and so, yeah. That was David Amos, project manager for Bovis Lend Lease, speaking at the building's topping out, and showing that even for someone used to overseeing the construction of multi-million pound global scale projects, the Mountbatten building was special. Over the last year since construction began in April 2007, ECS podcasts have made regular visits to the site to record its progress. It's difficult to get the scale, but you can begin to see now with this array of columns behind us, and the, the um, moulds essentially for the slabs going on above, you begin to get a sense of the scale of this thing. Yeah. When the building was officially topped out in November 2007, we were able to see the full extent of its exterior. Over the last four months, construction has taken place mostly on the inside of the building and we can now see the actual rooms and labs where ECS research will be taking place. Well, we're standing in our um, main nano fabrication clean room um, here and I, I'm probably standing on the point where our diffusion furnaces will be. I'm dressed up in the white bunny suit um, basically because the, the clean room, even though it's still being built, is now classified as clean. So all the workers and everybody else, visitors, all have to be dressed in, in the, the full clean kit. The idea of the Southampton Nanofabrication Centre is uh, not only to do our own research, but also to collaborate right across the University of Southampton with our colleagues to reach out to other academics in uh, the rest of the UK and also around the world to do collaborative uh, world-leading research. We're also are uh, aiming to do uh, work directly with, with industry and we've uh, a number of different modes that we're, we're planning to operate in from um, doing jobs for industry on a particular piece of, e of equipment which might just take an afternoon to long-term three-year strategic partnerships where we collaborate on a, a particular piece of research that's of interest to the company. So we'll be welcoming industry in here as well as our colleagues in the UK and around the world. very proud of what we've achieved here. Um, if you think about it, we poured the first column uh, on the 7th of April last year, so everything that you've seen today has literally been constructed in the last 52 weeks. It's a tremendous achievement and I'm so proud of what the guys have done for us. So, as the building becomes a familiar landmark on the high field horizon, progress looks set for the scheduled handover on 15th of July when the School of Electronics and Computer Science and the Octo Electronics Research Centre will actually take control of their space and begin the process of moving in the specialised equipment that will enable research to begin. ECS Podcast will be back to see that happen and to report on what we can expect the research teams to accomplish in the future.